Welcome to Discovering. It's late September and we're starting out this breezy morning in search of Lake Michigan perch. Lunch. That's perfect size right there. A quick stop for a fish fry and then back on the water for giant sturgeon. Whoa! It's all tonight, so sit back, put your feet up. It's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Hop on in. As the water cools down, the fishing heats up. I joined up with Menominee River fishing guide Brian Claremont and friends for a late September day on the water. The plan was to spend the late afternoon, early evening in search of giant sturgeon. But first, we'd enjoy a tasty fish fry. And if you're going to have a fish fry, you need some fresh fish. So we started out the day with some early morning perch fishing. Alrighty, what we got going on here today is, uh, it's, it's not quite fall, but, uh, the water cools off and uh, this is a big flat in here and uh, minnows come in in the shallow area and then the perch follow them up and there's uh, one big hole here where it goes to 13 feet and when these fish come in here they like to sit here in the morning and then when the afternoon comes the sun comes up if we get any sun today they get in the real thick weeds and they're a little harder to catch so let's uh, let's get some perch. The minners, big bait, big fish. Another one of my little perch rigs I like. This is just a cast master on here. And what I did is I tied a piece of line on here and then put a size 10 hook with a little orange bead. And that way when you jig this, you got the flasher and that brings the perch in and then they bite the minnow. And of course I'm gonna give this one to Jeff so he'll be the first one to catch a fish with it. We got Jeff Buddha and Jody Birch. Oh, there we go. What we got for depth right here? Right here, 12 feet. 12 feet. You guys are right on the edge of the weed, so just drop it right over the side of the boat. I like them. That's the kind I like to eat right there. These are perfect eating size fish right here. They're, all, they're like candy, these little guys yeah. like this. Better. Slip bobber rig and he's hanging right off the edge of the boat. He grabbed her, snapped her right up. These are tasty little morsels they are. We'll see you later on. We'll cook these up. I got a bucket here, Joe. That way in. This is my little uh, perch rig that I like to tie up. A lot of weeds, so I like to hug them through the lips. They go through the weeds a little bit better. All this is is two snells tied on with a sinker. And I'm just gonna drop this right over the side of the boat. Maybe a little bit of casting too. I just set her just a little bit off the bottom. Oh, bass! Large mouth. That's not a perch. Large mouth. <laughs> oh, holy! You don't get too many largemouth out in the bay here. Here you do. Do you? Yeah, tons of them. Nice little largemouth. Go back in there, buddy. That'd have been a good bird. Yeah, it's been kind of a weird year this year. We had uh, a lot of rain and then it started to get close to fall and it started to cool off and then warm back up. So the water temperature right now is 70 degrees. As it cools off a little bit more, these perch come in here more. So this has just started. That's a little one. Where there's little 
ones, there's big ones. <laughs> they gotta be little before they get big though. I like the little ones, man, they taste good. Here, these are little large malls. Now that's a bass, eh? <laughs> Lots of little ones, you just gotta weed through them. I didn't even, I couldn't even tell I had that on there. The middle's bigger than his, half his body. <laughs> hey. pot over there now. Oh, that's a big one. Little fellas. All right, here we go. They're getting bigger. You know what we call that? We call that gonna be lunch. <laughs> There you go, Jody, that's a nice one. Holy moly, is that a beautiful one, Jody. Eater, yum. There we go, you're getting better now. Lunch, that's perfect size right there, perfect eating size. How's that for a perch? I told you there's some big ones in here. This is a jumbo. That's all 12 inches. All right, this is a, a perch fisherman's best friend right here. Um, it's a roller or a tumbler. And you put the perch in here, it scales them. This is one of the bigger ones. It's not quite done yet. You can see there's still a few scales on there. So I'll throw that one back in here. We'll let it tumble a little bit longer. Kick around. When it comes out, it'll all be nice. Beat scaling on my hand. Yeah, look right down in there if you want. You can see there, you're all nice and scaled. And then all the scales end up in the water there, and it makes great fertilizer for the garden. Anyway, I got a little knife here, it's curved, and I just hit them real quick just to make sure there's no scales left on them. Those are all good. I'm an electric flame knife guy. Always been, always will. Once you get the angles down, Nice set of thin blades on this one. A lot of people make a mistake when they're flaying. You just pull the trigger down and you fly through it. You want to feather it a little bit because then if you're making any mistakes or you're getting a little out of position on your angle, you can fix it then. But important thing with this though here too is if you look at these blades, they're nice and thin. That's so when with these thicker blades, I'll grab a set of those in a second. You can you come down and you can make your turn. If your blades are real wide, here's my for cleaning wall, wall ice. Now you can see the difference. When you try to make your turn like that, it's so wide, you can't get the turn nice. So it makes it a lot harder. So I go back to the regular knife when I take out the ribs. Just it's easier. You don't lose as much meat. The main thing is getting through that pin bone and then turn your knife up right away and it all pops right off.
Round two. We went perch fishing this morning and then we cleaned them all up and ate them. And now we're gonna do a little sturgeon fishing. And uh, this rig here is just a regular sucker with a slip sinker. Run your line through the slip sinker. Let her drop down. Tie a barrel on it. And I've been running 30 pound line for a liter for these sturgeon. Cause there's some pretty beefy fish. Did you, did you catch that one that came out of the water? <laughs> That was a big one. But we'll get some lines in the water and then we'll have some time to play around. And we're gonna run a three-way here. Just a little three-way with a pancake sinker. It don't snag as much. And it lays flat like this. And since it's so windy today, and we're gonna put just another piece, another sucker on this. And just like when I walleye fish, I like to put a little keeper on there, keeps that sucker on there. Just a little piece of cut up twister tail or something on the end. Get to it. Here we go, we're gonna do a little bit of cut bait here. These are just some regular suckers. What I like to do is just like fillet them. So I'm just like I'm filleting a fish. I like that tail section on there. I'll cut it just like that. Now that's a good piece of cut bait there too. I just hook it right through the end there, through the skin. And them sturgeon, they bite just like a perch or anything else. It just tink, tink, tink and you grab it and hopefully we get to show you how it's done here. We uh. Had a couple sturgeon out crawlers this year, but uh, it's been cut bait and suckers. But we had something to pass the time, so we've been catching a few bass and a few walleyes. The waiting game, that's what it is now. Lake sturgeon are the only sturgeon species common to the Great Lakes Basin and are the largest freshwater fish native to that system. Like other sturgeons, this species is an ancient bottom feeder with a streamlined shape and skin bearing rows of bony plates on its sides and back. Sturgeon use their elongated spade-like snout to stir up sediment on the beds of rivers and lakes while feeding. The lake sturgeon has four sentry organs that dangle near its mouth. These organs, called barbells, help the sturgeon to locate bottom dwelling prey. The lake sturgeon has taste buds on and around its barbells near its rubbery lips. It extends its lips to vacuum up food, which it swallows whole due to its lack of teeth. Its diet consists of insect larvae, worms, leeches, and other small organisms it finds in the mud. Fish are rarely found in its diet and are likely eaten by accident only. Oh yeah, there's somebody home. I got one. He ain't very big. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> That's not what we're looking for. But you gotta kill a time somehow. Little bass. Adult sturgeon habitually return to spawn on the streams where they were born, often migrating long distances up rivers in the spring. Sexual maturity in females is reached between 21 and 33 years, and in males, between 8 and 12 years, but may take up to 22 years. This, this is not what we're looking for. But I guess we got to pass the time somehow. I got another one. This, this ain't what we're looking for but we gotta pass the time. So we're passing the time. I need a crawler, crawler man. The typical lifespan of a lake sturgeon is 55 years for males and 70 to 100 years for females. Lake sturgeons can grow to over seven feet and weigh in at over 200 pounds. Stop cleared, come on, come on. Oh no, it's a bass. Never mind, it's a bass. This is a big bass, though. Boy, I thought that was gonna be a sturgeon. This is a big bass. We're gonna hand land it, too. <laughs> it's a nice bass, though. Oh, look at this bass. That's why I thought it was a sturgeon. On cut bait, too. Are you done? Oh, he's barely hooked. Here, buddy. 
I want to grab that hook. Come here. There we go. Well, that's a little bit better. The way that pulled at first, I thought that was a sturgeon. But still, that's an 18 inch bass. Not what we're looking for. So let's try for the other fish. Here we go. This is sturgeon for sure. Quick, 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 quick. We on. Mine's coming up. I think it is, but... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice one. The Nate back anchor, Chris. Oh, there he goes. Oh, power. There he goes. Good job. It's no fuel. That's all on the way. We got a while yet. We got just that part. Oh. These take almost as long to fight them to get them in as it does to wait for a bite sometimes. Who tears out who? <laughs> Power. Not yet. Oh, I'm off the bottom there. Not for long, though. There he is. He's losing bubbles now, so he's getting tired. Background. I'll bring him up again for you, Chris. Here he comes. Chris, you want to try grabbing this one by the tail? If you touch his tail, he's going to go nuts. There you go, grab him. Grab him. Pull him up. I'm trying. Woo, water's cold. Got him? Almost. Okay, come back to you again. Got him? Got him? Yep. Ah, boom. Score! Whew. That was fun. <laughs> nah, the players now hold him up good. He doesn't want to flip, does he? It's coming unhooked. There we go. Just, we'll do it quick here to see what B is. Oh yeah, he's probably 55. How's that for a fish? Now that's a fish. 
So we're gonna let this bad boy go. And they're pretty tough fish. And away he goes. September 16th and 17th mark the annual Liberty Hunt. The two-day hunt is for disabled veterans and other disabled individuals, as well as youth ages 16 and under. I met up with one such proud hunter who connected with a nice buck. So we got up at 5 this morning, and we went out to the blind, and we spooked the deer going in. So then we went, then we sat there. I got situated, and my dad looked through the binoculars, and there was two deer. One was a doe, and the other one never picked up its head for 15 minutes. And that one was, a, and that one was this big boy. I shot it at, I think it was 6.45. We waited for a half hour, and then we went out to track it. We couldn't find no blood, no hair, and we looked for 45 minutes, and we kind of got discouraged. And then my dad called up his friend, and he looked to the left, and there it was. So then he called back his friend for some help. First we gutted it, and then we got it in the truck, and then that was it. It is 18 inches wide. I shot it with a 7mm08. We did not hunt over bait, we hunted in a field. We were watching where they were going and the patterns that they were going in. And I've been scouting for two weeks. I shot three bucks so far and this is my biggest one. My other two were three pointers. Thank you to the farmer that I hunted at. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.